You're so nice, so kind. That is the cutest church news I've ever seen. With some of our staff kids, let's give them a round of applause. They're super cute and they're way talented. Well, happy Mother's Day to you. What an honor it is. Um, to have you with us today, whether you're joining us at one of our campuses or joining us online. We're so glad that you're here. And if it's your first time, because mamas have a way of getting what they want. So if you're here today because your mom said, come to church with me, we hope it won't be your last day. And uh, we're just so glad that you're here. And you know, I wanna take one quick minute and honor my mom who's in the house this morning, Janice. Miss Janice. If you know her, you love her. And uh, we're kind of twins. We went, at, we went out recently and it was me and my mom and my sister in faith and somebody said, look, there's four generations. Are you doing the math there? They thought I was my sister's mother. But anyways, mama, I love you. You're amazing, you're such an example to me and I'm grateful for you every day. Grateful for all of you moms and you know I wanna just take a quick minute because I know today has a lot of emotions. It can have feelings of joy, it can have feelings of maybe being overwhelmed, it can possibly have feelings of dif disappointment and possibly even feelings of loss. So maybe if this is your first Mother's Day today without your mom here on earth anymore. I want you to know that we love you and there is a God in heaven who cares for you and can meet you exactly where you are. And maybe this is a hard day for you because you long to be a mother and the desire of your heart has not yet been met. We wanna tell you that we believe that God is still in the business of doing miracles. He hears you and I would encourage you to just keep praying Keep crying out to the Lord, and I believe in the most beautiful ways that only He can, He will build a family through you one day. So I wanna take a minute and pray for you moms because who would say as a mother that you need some prayer? Anybody in the house today need some prayer? All right, let me pray over you today. God, we're so grateful for you. Jesus, thank you for the gift of who you are. And Lord, we wanna thank you today for our moms, for the mothers in this house. God, I declare a fresh wind over them today. God, thank you for the children that you have entrusted us to. Lord, we trust you and lean into you for the guidance that we need to raise them and to discipline them and to love them. And most importantly, to train them in the way of truth through your word. God, so I just declare today to every mother under the sound of my voice, God, that you this morning are gonna anoint them in fresh and new ways. Jesus, thank you for the freedom that we have to gather today. Lord, I pray that as we dig into your word, Father, that you would bring fresh revelation into our lives to help us leave the place that we are in today better and stronger and ready, even more so to be used for your glory and growing your kingdom. God, I pray that the meditations of my heart would be acceptable unto you today, my King, my God, my Savior, and my friend. Lord, we love you and we ask this in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Well, again, we're so grateful that you are here. And if you're new, we're in a series right now called The Help Center. And I find it ironic that May is the, um, the month that we recognize mental health awareness, which is wonderful because if you're not aware, it's a real thing, right? Mental health awareness falls the same month as Mother's Day. I don't know, I don't think it's ironic, friends. <laughs> but our prayer is that over the next few weeks that we are able to give you some tools, some principles to help you in this life because life is difficult and life is hard and we sometimes need all the help that we can get, right? And so if you're taking notes this morning, the title of my message today is I'm a Mess. Maybe for some of you, you want to put in parentheses, I'm a hot mess. <laughs> Whatever it may be. Any of you in this place today or at your campus, raise your hand if you feel like you're a mess or you have felt like you're a mess. Praise God, my people are in the house. <laughs> in the house. You know, we have four kids if you're not familiar with our family. Our oldest is 14. His name is Owen. Then Faith is 11. And then 
We have another little girl, Abigail. She's four years old, and then our baby Jonas is two. We did it on purpose, guys. We took a big break and started over. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you, the little two get away with way more than the older two. Not because we love them more, but because we're tired. <laughs> we are tired, so we just pray the mercy of God over them. But there's a lot of mess happening in our house, not just physically, but emotionally. So Abigail, our four-year-old, and Jonas, our two-year-old, their big thing right now is whining. I am too old to be listening to whining every day. So my husband and Jonas, they have this thing, because let's get real, if your child's not crying tears, they are fine. They are fine. So Jonas comes in the room and he's got this wine fest going on and my husband and him have this thing. My husband looks Jonas in the, Jonas in the eye and he says, dry it up, dry it up, dry it up. And he just, yes sir, yes sir. In his you know, cute little two-year-old voice. So a few days ago, my Abigail, she's having a whining party, tantrum party by herself. And I'm in the other room and I hear Jonas go over to her her name's Abigail, but he calls her Agatha. Agatha. He says, Agatha, die it up. Agatha, die it up. Listen to me, parents. Our kids are watching us. They are listening to us. It's scary. Honestly, it's scary. But there's all kinds of things that can make your life feel like a mess, right? Maybe it's people. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> Maybe finances. Maybe you have too many passwords. We have a spreadsheet, friends, for our passwords. I imagine you do the same. Maybe it's those red dots on the app that tells you there's stuff that's gone unnoticed or unread that can make you feel like a mess. Maybe it's traffic. If you're local to our area, blessed be 95 North and South. <laughs> blessed be Route 3. There is more people coming into this community and we do not have the road work for it. But maybe traffic makes you feel like a mess. And honestly, life is hard. Life brings messy things. Sometimes we choose our mess, but sometimes because we live in a fallen world, life happens to us. Maybe you've been hurt or maybe you've been abused. Mess is anything that causes you to feel stress anxiety, worry, those are ideas of a mess. And you know, science and the Bible agree on this because science is finally catching up with the word of God, but they say that most battles are won and lost in your mind. In other words, your thinking drives your living. Your thinking decides your behavior. And so whatever that is in your mind that you think, so you are. Proverbs 23, seven, for as he thinks in his heart, so he is. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with the term ruminating, but ruminating is excessive thinking. Some of us ruminate on things over and over and over and over again. We get a thought in our head and before we know it, we've taken a mustard seed and made it an oak tree. Most of the time, it's not even a reality. But when we ruminate, this can magnify existing symptoms of pre-existing conditions, such as depression, OCD, anxiety, phobias, schizophrenia. These are things that, that can pop up because we become so excessive over a thought or over an idea. Now, there's also a scientific term for ruminating, and it's called to chew the cud. Let's go to the farm for a quick minute. So across the street from where we live, there's an Angus beef farm. So every day when we drive home, if the cows are out, there are fields of cows. Now, I want you to know that where we live is like out in the country, but it's seven minutes from Starbucks. <laughs> it is just a little bit of heaven on earth for me personally. But as we drive to our house, there are fields of cows. And several months ago, my daughter has decided, my daughter Abigail, she says, Mommy, roll down the windows when we pass the cows. Say, okay. So we roll down the windows, and she shouts out to the cows, Penelope, we love you. <laughs> Penelope, I miss you. Penelope sleeps so good 
tonight, Penelope. I have no idea where this child came up with the name <laughs> Penelope, but she clearly has a pet cow friend named Penelope. But here, here's the deal with ruminating. This is what a cow does when it ruminates. If you have a easy stomach, you may wanna close your ears. So a cow will eat its food, chew its food, swallow its food, and then regurgitate it. That means to throw up. <laughs> then it'll do the cycle again. It'll eat that which it regurgitated, chew it, swallow it, regurgitate it. A few times it does this until it's all digested in throughout its system. Now here's the deal, when we ruminate, we bring it back up over and over and over again every time it gets nastier. It gets worse, it gets nastier and nastier, and we have created these false identities and these false worlds and again, if you're new today, you need to know that we believe that the word of God is truth. Spoken out of the mouth of God to men on the earth to bring truth into the world for us to live by. It is a guidebook. It is there to help us. And so what I pray to do today is we're just going to bring up three ideas, three principles from God's word to make less of your mess. Now, I do wanna say this, I am, I'm not a clinical psychiatrist, I'm not a doctor, and I do believe that there are some of us that we may need a little extra help for the things that have gone on in our lives, and that's okay. I encourage you to stick with that. But all of us can relate to some form of a mess in our lives, so I pray today that these few things can help you as you move past the mess in your life and move into all that God has in store for you. So the first point today is this, cast your cares on him. Cast your cares on him. Now, in the Bible, every miracle is preceded by an instruction. So everything that we're gonna talk about today requires your action. We like to say it like this, you do in the natural what only you can do and you let God intervene in the supernatural and he will meet you where you are. So we're gonna take the action, we're gonna cast our cares on him. Let's look at these couple of verses. Psalms 55, 22, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Not just because he can handle it, but because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. You see, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone that he can devour. In the Greek, the word for cast means to hurl. To cast something means to hurl something. Just listen at the Phillips translation of 1 Peter 5, 7. You can throw the whole weight of your anxieties upon him, for you are his personal concern. You are his personal concern. So that means we aren't just to throw a little bit of our mess, but we're to throw the whole weight of our mess. Raise your hand in here today or at your campus if you like to fish. All 10 of you. That's awesome. Whatever it is you like, I like to go out on boats and be quiet, but not really fishing. It's not my thing. I think it's kind of boring, but I digress. I'm excited for you, those of you who like to fish. It's so <laughs> wonderful. What I do know is this, though. I'm not a fisher lady, but I know when you cast a line, you don't just plop it in the water. You cast that line. You cast it all the way out, as much as it can handle, as much as you can throw it out there to catch that fish. Because when you just drop that line in front of you, it's so easy to just pick it back up. And here's what we do with our mess. We say, God, maybe we don't, some of us may. We say, God, I trust you. Here you go. Only to come right back and pick it back up again. Then I'm dealing with it. Okay, God, that's right. I do trust you. I'm gonna toss it. No, God says, cast, cast all your cares upon me. Cast your worry about the future. The fact that your toddler is a biter, cast it on Jesus. <laughs> Maybe that's just us. <laughs> cast the anxiety, single mamas, cast that anxiety on him. 
Maybe that you found yourself in a place of single parenting. Cast it on him. Cast the financial stress that you lose sleep over at night. Now let's talk about verse eight for one second right here. Starts at be alert. Be alert and of sober mind because your enemy is prowling, looking for someone to devour. Who has ever been exhausted? Anybody ever been exhausted? So a few years ago, um, my husband and I went to Israel and we came back and we got back in enough time to pick up our big kids from school. The time changes about six or seven hours ahead of where we live. So I pick up the kids from school and I'm like, hey guys, you wanna go get a treat? And they're like, yeah, mom. I said, great, so we go to Starbucks. <laughs> and um, they got cake pops, it's fine. So we're in the drive through line you know, we do our order, we get up to the window, the lady hands us our stuff and she says, have a great day. I look at this woman and I say, good night. <laughs> and I just, we just drive off. Faith looks at me, she says, mom, do you know what you just said to that lady? It's like three in the afternoon, guys. And I said, no. And she said, you just told that woman good night. Because here's what's happened. Here's what happens. When you're exhausted, you do dumb things. You do dumb things. And when you don't cast everything onto the Lord, when you just toss it in and you pick it back up, that is exhausting. And when you are exhausted, you are not of sober mind. And let me tell you, if you have placed your faith in Jesus and you have been filled with the Holy Spirit, which you receive at salvation, you will do greater things in these because of your faith in Jesus. Greater things than even Jesus did on earth and the enemy doesn't like it. You are a threat to him. So we have got to be alert. We've got to be of sober mind because when we are exhausted, he has a way of sneaking in. He's not smart. He doesn't do anything new. He's not creative, but he's watching to see who he can devour. So be alert, be of sober mind, cast the full weight of it upon him. All right, point number two today is this. Petition to his proven nature. What does it mean to petition? Petition is a request made for something desired, especially a respectful or humble request, as to a superior or to one of those in authority, a supplication or a prayer, a petition for aid. In other words, we are to call out to who we know God is. Petition, call out to who we know God is. Let's look at 1 John 5. This is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, don't skip over this. Jesus, may my boss not show up to work ever again. <laughs> Jesus, would you cause so-and-so to slip down the stairs? Jesus, remember, according to his will, his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. So what's his proven nature? Is he a forsaker? Does he leave us hanging? Let's see what he says. Deuteronomy, be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you nor will he forsake you. So God's word is truth. His promises are true. He tells me right there, he will not leave me and he will not forsake me. Isaiah, Isaiah, I don't even know what I just said. Hosea. <laughs> Hosea is an Old Testament prophet. And he was saying to the people at that time that you are destroyed by your lack of knowledge. It is very important in this day and age that you know your God. Because there is a world around you that's gonna give their opinions about your God. So you need to know your God's proven nature. If you don't know your God's proven nature, then you will be tempted to listen to the world's view, which is not who God is. Jeremiah says, O sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power, nothing is too hard for you, right. nothing. Some of you may have feelings of specific things in your life. 
Maybe right now in this moment, you're, you're feeling overwhelmed or you're feeling worried or you're feeling anxious. Maybe some of you are, are feeling depressed. And I wanna tell you that feelings are indicators, they are not identifiers. Yeah. Feelings indicate how you feel, but they do not define who you are. You see, you are not depression. You are not anxious. You are not a, wor a worrier. You are not overcome. You are not defeated. You may have these feelings of that, but my God tells me that he has great plans in store for me to give me a hope and to give me a future. So when the lies of the enemy are over here whispering to you, you're not good enough, you're not gonna make it today, all you are is a bunch of mess, all those choices you've made, you just say, nope. On the authority of God's word, I am an overcomer. I am an overcomer. Listen, here's a really practical exercise to do. My husband taught our church this several years ago, and I just felt like it was so good to bring up again. So when you sense these negative thoughts, because remember, our thoughts drive our living, our thoughts drive our actions. So you, when you recognize a negative, toxic thought coming into your mind, you're gonna recognize it, you're gonna replace it with the word of God, and you're gonna put it on repeat. You're gonna recognize that toxic thinking, you're going to replace it with the word of God, and you're gonna put it on repeat. I'm gonna give you an example. Take out your phones and screenshot this. You have permission. Then put it back away. So, here's a really very practical way to recognize, replace, and repeat. So I have feelings of being overwhelmed. God, I'm so overwhelmed. I'm gonna recognize that's a toxic thought. I'm gonna replace it with the word of God. God has the power to deliver. That's what it tells me in Exodus. Therefore, I am not overwhelmed. Maybe you have thoughts of this is just my lot in life. God has favorite people. I'm not one of them. Replace it with the word of God. God has plans to prosper you and not to harm you. You, you, not just me, you. Fill in your name there. Another option, maybe you feel alone. I'm all alone. Nope, God is close to the brokenhearted. That's in Psalms. Maybe you feel forgotten. Nope, God goes before you. He will never leave you and he will never forsake you. How could God still love me? Maybe for some of you, after what you did last night. How could God still love me when I keep doing that thing over and over and over? There's no way, there's no way. Recognize that toxic thought. You replace it with the word of God that says this. God's love for you is never ending, never ending. Nothing is consistent anymore. Words are changing, people are changing, all these things are changing in the world. I don't know what's up, I don't know what's down, I don't know what's to the left, I don't know what's to the right. Look at God's word. Though the universe will change, God never will. Our God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, amen? And when you're unsure, God is faithful to fulfill his promises. All of those scriptures are God's promises for you. So you recognize that toxic thought, you replace it with the word of God, that is power, and then you put it on repeat. You know, the more and more you do something, the more it becomes natural for you. This is the amazing thing about our brain. The state that your brain is in right now, you can change it. You can change it. That's why God's word says, take captive every thought. We have a lot of thoughts in our lifetime. But we have the ability to, to capture those thoughts, replace it with the word of God, so that we are able to walk in the fullness of all he's created us to. And then the third point today is to sing through the mess. How many of you in here today have a song? Anybody have a song, maybe like a wedding song or like a friendship song, maybe like a kid's song, maybe those dang commercials? Nationwide is on your side. <laughs> you know it, right? Because here's the deal. Songs trigger memories and they make moments, right. right? They trigger memories and they make moments. So um, my parents are here today. We applauded for my mom, but my dad's here too. Love my dad so much. 
So when I was a little girl, my mom and dad would sing over me at night. And I could remember, I still to this day, I'm years old, and I still remember that lullaby my mom and dad would sing. I love Tamara Marie, Tamara Marie, I love her. My real name's Tamara. I don't go by that because nobody ever says it right. But if you can say it right, you can call me by that, Tamara. But that's what they would sing over me to get me to go to sleep. That was a long time ago, guys, but I still remember it. Then school age came. It was time to wake up every morning. I'm not a morning person, my friends. Still not. Now, the fact that I get up and get to have coffee with my favorite cream encourages me out of the bed. But when I grew up, my beautiful mom would come in the room every morning, flip that light on, and say, shake a leg. Can you imagine how that made me feel? Shake a leg. I would, I would shake that leg and stick it right back under the covers. But then she starts singing this. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I did not feel like this was the day that the Lord has made. But she sang it over my life. Because even though I didn't feel it, a song has the power to change the atmosphere. Yeah. High school came along. <clears throat> this is a story all about how my life got <laughs> twist turned upside down. I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there. I'll tell you how came the prince of a town called. Some of you know it. <laughs> right? That was over decades ago, friends. You understand what I'm saying. So my baby Jonas came along. Again, those of you who aren't familiar with us, Jonas is now two. We adopted Jonas at five days old. I want to honor his birth mom today. We honor his birth mom. I honor all of the birth moms for their courage and their bravery in giving my son something they felt like they couldn't do on their own. But I'm going to tell you guys, it was a year. So we have three other children. These three other children weighed nine, 10, and 11 pounds at birth. Yes, true story. I was there. <laughs> so when baby Jonas came, he was six pounds, five ounces. I had gotten a dream baby. But let me tell you about fat kids. <laughs> fat babies, specifically. They like to eat, they like to sleep, and they like to eat again. Baby Jonas was hungry all the time, you guys. For 12 months, baby Jonas was hungry. Every three hours, baby Jonas wanted to eat. 2019, I hope it was great, because I don't remember it. <laughs> if you come to me and you say, do you remember when, blah, 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 and I would say, is it 2019? If so, the answer is no because I was so tired. Sleep is real, my friends. Some of you, you're feeling in a mess today. You need to take a nap. Like in all honesty, adjust your sleep patterns just a little bit, it may help you, but I was not sleeping and I was very at, the, at my wit's end. I just, it was 21 days of prayer about eight weeks after Jonas came and I said to my husband, you go pray and you go fast and you pray for a miracle because I can't go, I can't do it. So fast forward a few months, some beautiful friends of ours were in Washington, D.C., preaching, leading worship. And so my husband said, you want to go? And I was like, I guess. Like, I mean, it's, it is at nighttime, so that will give me at least like one three-hour feeding without I don't have to, you know, be there. Maybe I can sleep in the event. <laughs> so I'm like, I'll, I'll go. I'll show up. Guys, I was at a bad place, a bad place. So I show up about three rows back from the front. And I'm like, God, I've got nothing. I've got nothing. I know you gave this miracle baby to us and I am so grateful, but I am so tired. My physical body is tired. My soul is tired. My spirit is tired. And all I knew to do was just to say, God, here I am. Here I am. You do only what you can do. In that moment, the worship team began to sing, Spirit, of God, 
fall fresh on us. We need your presence. Spirit of God, fall fresh on us. We need your presence. I can tell you in that moment from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, I felt that weight lift, lift. Because listen to me today, worship is your weapon. Worship is the thing that will take you out of your mess, out of your pit, and put you on solid ground. Acts talks about Paul and Silas, they were in jail, they were imprisoned, and they begin to worship. Those around them begin to listen in. As they worship, the ground began to shake. The walls came crumbling down, the chains broke off, not just them, but the ones that were around them. Because worship is our weapon. Worship is our weapon. I wanna show you this picture very quickly of my, my two littles. We call them the littles and the bigs. This picture is hilarious to me. Look at them in the baby pool, and there's that giant pool next to them, right? So they're hanging out in the baby pool, just chilling, just hanging out there. When right beside them, there is this entire ability and opportunity for them to be swimming all the ways now. Granted, they need their life jacket on. They don't know how to swim yet. But being in the little pool feels safe. Being in the little pool means I don't have to take a risk. I don't have to work too hard. Being in the little pool means I'm comfortable. And here's what I wanna say to you today is that John 10.10 10 tells me that my God came that you might have life and have it to the full, not in the baby pool. Not in the baby pool. And some of us have been sitting in our mess for too long. You've been sitting in your mess for too long and I am not trying to lessen how you feel. Trust me. Everybody's story is different. Everybody's circumstance is different, but pain is the same. Pain is universal. Pain feels the same. And some of us have just been waiting in the baby pool. And today, God is saying, step out. In the words of baby Jonas, it is time to dry it up. It is time to dry it up because God has great plans and purpose for you. You know, for two summers in college, I got to lifeguard. Favorite job of my life, honestly. I never had a rescue in the baby pool. Not one time. And there is a world of hurting people that need to be rescued, that need to know the love of God that you have. And if you have placed your faith in Jesus today, you are their answer. You are their answer. And there is a God in heaven who is fighting for you. You are not alone in this. You are not what everyone's trying to label you as. You are an overcomer. You are an overcomer. Would you close your eyes today with me? I'm gonna ask something of you with no one looking around. Would you be so bold today to say, you know what, I'm in a mess. I'm in a funk. I've been in it for a really long time and I am done. I am done living in the baby pool. I am ready to get out and pursue all that God has for me. Would you raise your hand today? Keep it up, keep your hand up. I see all your hands all over the room. Keep it up, keep it up high. I see you, God sees you. This is a sign of you saying, God, today I'm leaving it. I'm leaving it in this room. Whatever campus you're at, you're gonna leave it in that room. If you're watching from home or wherever you may be, you're gonna leave it in that space. And I'm gonna pray over, right, over you right now. And we're gonna believe in Jesus' name that this is the end of the mess. God, we love you today. Holy Spirit, thank you for meeting with us. You are so kind. 
Thank you that your promises are true and everlasting. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray over my friends. I pray over my brothers and sisters in Christ. And I pray, Lord, they have done what they can do, which was to admit and acknowledge. So I pray in the supernatural, Lord, that right now your Holy Spirit would flow from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. God, would they feel a physical reaction of giving the mess in their life to you? God, I pray that you would encourage them in the season ahead. Jesus, I pray that you would bring those along that need to give words of encouragement to them, Lord. Father, I pray that they would not look back, that they would move forward. God, I thank you that you bring us from victory to victory, that your word promises us that you have so much more in our life, God, and I thank you that nothing is wasted. So all the mess that we've been through in our life, God, I thank you that you use all of it for your good and for your purpose. Father, we love you today, God. We thank you that you are on the throne, alive, ready, and willing to hear from us today, God. We love you and place this in your hands, and we say we surrender. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey, we hope today's message spoke to your situation and was helpful to your life. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're posting new content every week. And also, if you'd like to partner with us financially, you can click the link below. You know, it's thanks to the generosity of people like you that we're able to meet the needs of people all over the world. So thank you for making a difference and helping deliver this message to the people that need it most. And thanks for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you soon.